Good morning, friends. Excited to worship with you guys today. Let's pray. God, thanks so much for this time that we can gather together, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We pray that you'd be glorified as we worship you, and we pray that you would help us to worship you from the depths of our hearts, not just with our lips, God, but from the depths of our hearts. Help us to connect with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Open our eyes, Lord, let us see all that you are, all that you made. Open our ears, Lord, let us hear all that you are. Be loud and clear. Please be near. As our praises rise, may your presence fall. Lord, we welcome you into this place, God. We want to sense your presence here, God. We want to see your face smiling down upon us as we bring you this praise and glory, God. We want to connect with you, Jesus. Draw near to us, God, as we are drawing near to you in this time. Thank you, Lord. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me And all my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my hands oh, I will sing of the goodness I will sing 
sing of your goodness, God, because you are always good, God. Whatever the circumstances, Lord, whatever the weekend has brought us, whatever the week, the month, the year has brought us, God, you are always good, Lord, and always worthy of our praise, Jesus. God, just thank you uh, for the book of Daniel that we're studying right now, Lord, and it's always been one of my favorite books, God. And as we get into it now, would you just give us eyes to see and ears to hear? We ask these things in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Good morning, Parkside Church. We are so glad you are here watching the service with us online today. We hope you're having a great weekend, a great week, and we pray that God has awesome things in store for you through Jim's message today. My name is Rachel Britz. I'm the kids director here at Parkside, and we have some great uh, family resources. If uh, you're interested in, in helping your family grow closer to God together, so uh, connect Connect with Jim or myself through our website or if you have our phone number, we would love to get those uh, resources in your hand or you can check out our website at www.parksidechurch.cc slash Parkside Kids Online. Well, hey, uh, if you're while you're here, if you could go on your phone or whatever to parksidechurch.cc slash Sunday and fill out the community card, we would love that just to know you're here to see how we could be praying for you. That's our way of connecting while we're all uh, doing this uh, socially distanced right now. Also, we like to say you don't give to Parkside, but through Parkside to impact North County, the West, and the world. And there, God is doing great things. We were able to sponsor um, some people through the Vista Adult School this past week um, so that they could go through Dave Ramsey's uh, Financial Peace University. And we're going to be able to uh, uh, speak into the their lives through that. Um, and it's because of giving through Parkside. Um, so if you are able, go to parksidechurch.cc slash give and you can give through there. Or we now have a Venmo account, My Parkside Church, and you can give through there as well. Uh, today we are in week three of our series, The New Normal, walking through the book of Daniel. And it's a great Bible story that um, you may have learned before, but I think Jim has some fresh insights and ways that we can apply it to our life. So check this out once again. We are so glad you are worshiping with us today. Hey, good morning, Parkside. I am live on site at one of my scariest places in the world. You might be going, Jim, this doesn't seem like a very scary place at all. It's a quarter mile from my house and it's a little bridge. Uh, but in this area, there's like usually nobody around. And I've said, hey, if people don't know where I'm at for a couple days, there's a good chance I'm just lying decomposing somewhere here in the weeds. Or I've watched the movie Jurassic Park and I'm confident that a couple of the scenes were filmed right here. And sometimes when I'm running in the pitch dark, I'm think a dinosaur is gonna jump out. You might be going, well, Jim, why would you risk your life then, you know, to, to run across this bridge? And here's why. Ah, I love this bridge. It's a shortcut for me to get to go home and park where there's tons of trails or I get to go run. Isn't that true a little bit in life? Sometimes we gotta cross a scary bridge to get to something that's so much better. And we're in this series called The New Normal, walking through the book of Daniel. And for sure, we're gonna see that like crazy in Daniel's life. If you got your Bible, which you should, turn to Jan Daniel chapter two, and I'm gonna read a chunk. So starting in verse one through verse 23, it says, in the second year of his reign, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams. His mind was troubled and he could not sleep. So the king summoned the magicians, enchanters, sorcerers, and astrologers to tell him um, what he had dreamed. When they came in and stood before the king, he said to them, I've had a dream that troubles me and I wanna know what it means. When the astrologers answered the king, may the king live forever. Tell your servants a dream and we'll interpret it. The king replied to the astrologers, this is what I firmly decided. If you don't tell me what my dream was and interpret it, I will have you cut into pieces and your houses turned into piles of rubble. But if you tell me the dream and explain it, you'll receive from me gifts and rewards and great honor. So tell me the dream and interpret it for me. Once more, they replied, 
Let the king tell his servants the dream and we'll interpret it. The king answered, I'm certain that you're trying to gain time because you realize that this is what I've firmly decided. If you do not tell me the dream, there's only one penalty for you. You have conspired to tell me misleading and wicked things, hoping the situation will change. So then tell me the dream and I will know that you can interpret it for me. The astrologers answered the king, there's no one on earth who can do what the king asks. No king, however, great and mighty has ever asked such a thing and any magician or enchanter or astrologer. What the king asks is too difficult. No one can reveal it to the king except the gods and they do not live among humans. This made the king so angry and furious that he ordered the execution of all the wise men of Babylon. So the decree was issued to put the wise men to death and the men were sent to look for Daniel and his three friends to put them to death. When Arioch, the commander of the king's guard, had gone out to uh, put to death the wise men of Babylon, Daniel spoke up to him with wisdom intact. He asked the king's officers, why did the king issue such a harsh decree? Arioch then explained the matter to Daniel. At this, Daniel went to the king and asked for time so that he might interpret the dream for him. Then Daniel returned to his house and explained the matter to his friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. He urged them to plead for mercy from the God of heaven concerning this mystery so that he and his friends might not be executed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. During the night, the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven and said, Praise be to the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. He changes times and seasons. He disposes kings and raises up others. He gives wisdom to the wise and acknowledge to the discerning. Acknowledge to the discerning. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness and light dwells with him. I thank and praise you, God of my ancestors. You have given me wisdom and power. You have made known to me what we asked of you. You have made known to us the dream of the king. So in chapter one, we learn that he's given wisdom, health, and influence, but seemingly by the time we hit chapter two, that's all disregarded. Daniel was seen by the king as being 10 times wiser than anybody else in the nation, but he's not even consulted in this situation. Probably he was 18 or 19 years old, so he's some young punk kid. Um, you know, he's low man on the totem pole, but the top advisors who do get consulted, they don't have an answer and they try to stall for time, hoping that the king will come to a census and go, you know what, this really isn't fair, but instead he, he gets more resolve. And they go, this, this isn't fair, king. You know, no one has been ever asked to do this. This is an impossible situation. But the king's point's kind of valid as well. He's like, but if you're like connected to God, then shouldn't he be able to give you the answer? And here we are once again, that Daniel and his buddies are in the middle of facing consequences for something that they had nothing to do with. Such is life. They're not even told there was a dream to interpret. But we got to refer back to this every single week of the series. Daniel's able to deal with this with tact and to be cool because and he realized that God was in control even when situations seemingly weren't, that God had this and that, that he could go to God. If it's simply in life, things happen that happen, then man, what hope is there? But if man, what God says is true, then we can trust him in the most difficult situations. And think about this for a second in context. Their situation is way worse than anything we're, we would be going through, right? I mean, if Trump wins or if Biden wins, you know, there's no fear of like, we're gonna be cut into pieces. These people were all slaves. Um, and this is not our dilemma. So what do you do when you're stuck in between an impossible situation and being cut into pieces? <laughs> and Daniel has total faith in God to approach the king, maybe because what is there to lose? You know, he's gonna die anyways, but he's never interpreted a dream before in his life. But he had read the book of Genesis and there we see Joseph do it. And I think Daniel thinks God hasn't changed. So if God could do that through Joseph and he could do that through me. In fact, his response to the king is almost identical to what Joseph said to Pharaoh hundreds of years earlier. This situation was even more difficult because he's got to tell him what, the, what actually the, uh, the dream was. But here's a huge truth for us. Do you see this book as simply some good stories, maybe even the truth of God? Or do you see it as it says in Hebrews chapter four, this is alive and active like a double-edged sword, meaning as I read this, I learn how God wants to work through me. That's sure what Daniel saw. So then you have to ask the question, well, what could Daniel have done in this situation? And he could have complained. He could have given up. He could have tried to hide or turn and run. He surely could have blamed God. Like, God, I'm following you with resolve. And this is what happens. Instead, he goes great to the, straight to the king. And he asks what the others had asked for, for more time. But they did it because they were stalling. Daniel was doing it because he needed time to pray. 
When life feels like it's attacking you, I think we learned from Daniel, don't be frozen in fear. Um, instead, man, we need to step out in some way. I read this quote recently that most people do nothing because they can't do everything. And Daniel does something. I want to tell you three steps that I think Daniel takes that's huge for us in our life and our time. The first one of this is Daniel steps down. He acknowledges that this situation is too big for him. And the only chance is to get on his knees before God and say, help. And I'd ask the question, is this your strategy in difficult situations? Daniel prays through the night to, to do that. I think Daniel does it, first of all, because he already had a rhythm of, of prayer. We're going to read later on in Daniel 6 that Daniel got on his knees each day a couple times a day, as, as he always did. I think Daniel also did this naturally because he had some other people that he was used to praying with. He had some prayer buddies. For us, I've got a couple different groups that I pray with on a weekly basis, but one of them is uh, some people on Thursday nights, the, uh, Wayne Twadell and Blake and Susan Froelich and Rachel and I, we get on Zoom and pray for an hour, eight to nine. And it's awesome and it flies by and it's just a rhythm of our life. Um, but it's interesting, so they, they, they pray and maybe go, what? I can't pray through the night. And I would challenge you on that because my guess is you've tossed and turned through the night. You've stressed through the night. Maybe you've worked through the night or late into the hours. You've played video games through the nights. You've Netflix binged through the night. Jesus, when he needed his greatest wisdom of who his disciples would be, he prayed through the night. Do you know, where there are movements around the world, a common thing is at least on a monthly basis, people come together and pray through the night. Maybe God actually could do that through us. And then we learn God gives them the answer. And his first response, listen to this, is not wake up the king, we got some lives to save. Instead, he, he prays some more to God to thank him for what he's just done. Before he even knew with certainty that the interpretation God had given him was correct and was gonna save lives, he was already thanking God in advance. So the first thing is you step down, but here's the second one, which I forget so often, is we gotta step in. Remember this, God's primary call in your life is not ministry, it's intimacy. God did not save you to do something. Like, oh, I'm just so disappointed, they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. God's primary call in your life is relationship, is to be with him. And because Daniel steps down, now God invites him to step in to grow in relationship with the God of the universe, and he grows in awe of what God can do. One of the things we say around here at Parkside is supplication is the best application. Supplication is a long word for prayer. And so before we move forward, I'm actually gonna have us go into a prayer time for a while, and then I'll finish the last part of the talk. And um, we're gonna pray what Daniel prayed here. So I'm gonna talk about it, and then we'll pray through these three parts together. And the first part that he prays is he prays to God, he gives praise to God, for two of God's most important attributes, wisdom and power. How, how crazy is that? That Daniel was brought to Babylon so that he would grow in wisdom, yet when everyone's under pressure, their wisdom is totally inadequate. They don't know what to say. No one had any answers. Man, in this COVID crazy season, man, people are taking medication like more than ever before. Depression's up, suicide's up, divorce rates are up. The world doesn't have an answer to the pain that we're going through, but God does. He has wisdom and power. So we're gonna start by praising God. And I wanna make this easy for you. If you get it, parksidechurch.cc slash Sunday, you need to do this. So do it right now on your phone. Uh, click on um, the verses and there's 10 verses there that have to do with God's power and God's praise. And what I want you to do as a family, if you're by yourself, hey, read the verse and then pray over it for a sentence or two. Like here's an example. One of them is James 1.5. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach and it will be given to him. You pray something like this. Dear God, thank you that you give out your wisdom to us. Whether I've been an idiot in my life or I've followed you regardless, you give it. And I just want to praise you and say thank you that you're generous with your wisdom. So I'm going to give you the next like three, four minutes as a group. And would you... Um, read through these verses, do one at a time, and then have somebody pray over each one.
The next part of the prayer is uh, Daniel then praises this all wise and powerful God that he actually gives wisdom to other people. He imparts both to mankind uh, the same the same wisdom. He changes times and seasons. He sets up kings and disposes them. He reveals deep and hidden things. He gives wisdom to those who rule. So I want us now to take another three or four minutes and will you spend some time praying for wisdom and power for the people that are leading us. So pray for our president, pray for both candidates, pray for our Supreme Court, pray for our governor, pray for our mayor, pray for the people are um, leading the school board, pray for your pastor, that they would have wisdom from God and then they'd have power to obey what God tells them to do. So I have just one person pray for one, one go around or if it's just you, uh, pray for, for all those different people for wisdom and power. You got three minutes ready, go. And then part three is simply, he praises God for the wisdom and power that God just had given him personally. So ask God to give you wisdom and the pressures that you're facing in your life and then power to obey what he's calling you to do. So maybe it's, God, give us wisdom on what we're supposed to do with our kids when it comes to schooling right now and then the power to obey it no matter what. Uh, give us uh, power and wisdom when it comes to our finances and our future and our family and the broken relationships that we're struggling with and our health issues and then give us power to step in to action. So now go around or if it's just you, hey, pray for power and wisdom with the issues that you're facing. You got about three minutes. Ready? Go.
right, in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, so the first thing you do is you step down, man, you got to pray, get on your knees. Second is step in and go, man, I got to praise God now for what he's shared. And the third one we're going to learn is you got to step out. We actually got to obey what God said. And usually I think in life, we think the stepping out part is the most scary and the most difficult. But look at this for Daniel. I think it was the easiest because God had spoken to him when he stepped down and he stepped in. So now he just had to deliver the message. Let me just paraphrase verses 23 through 43, he goes to the king and he says, hey, I'm not gonna be able to interpret this for you, but my God can, and here's the dream that you had. And he says, hey, you saw this giant statue, and a statue first, the head was made out of gold, and that gold represents you, Nebuchadnezzar, and it's the world empire of Babylon. This is the first like world empire that taken over everything. This represents you, but at some point that's gonna end, and the next part is silver, and he talks about this next empire that will come, and you look through history and you can clearly see he's talking about the Medes and the Persians, which we're actually gonna read about in chapter five. It's not too far away. Then he says there's the bronze part of the statue that you looked at, the brass part. And um, and that was, you look in history and it's very simple. It's the Greeks led by Alexander the Great. At one point, Alex the Great wept because he had no more nations to conquer. There was nobody else left to bully in his life. And then finally it says the last part that the feet of the statue was iron mixed with clay. And you look in history really clearly, and the empire after the Greeks is the Romans. And he says, he says, these are all gonna come. And then, let me just read to you verses 44 through 49 of what happens next in this passage. Uh, it's, it's pretty unbelievable uh, what Daniel's able to say to him. He says, in the time of those kings, the ones I just talked about, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed, nor will be left to another people. It will crush all those kingdoms and bring them to an end, but it will itself endure forever. This is the meaning of the vision of the rock cut out of the mountain, uh, but not by human hands, a rock that broke the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold to pieces. The great God has shown the king what will take place in the future. This dream is true and its inter interpretation is trustworthy. Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell prostrate before Daniel and paid honor and ordered that an offering and incense be presented to him. The, the king said to Daniel, surely your God, capital G, is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and revealer of mysteries, for you are able to reveal this mystery. So he starts praising God. Then the king placed Daniel in a high position and lavished many gifts on him. He made him ruler of the entire province of Babylon and placed him in charge of all of his wise men. Moreover, at Daniel's request, the king appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego administrators over the province of Babylon, while Daniel himself remained in the royal court. Did you guys catch this last part? So the last kingdom, the Romans, is gonna end and a rock will come that was not made by man, but by God that's gonna endure forever. What's he talking about? He's talking about Jesus. Um, man, God is using this scene that we thought was horrible and all these people are gonna die to actually reveal his plan for the future through a pagan king. And none of us would have ever known it and all these people would have died unless one person said, I'm gonna step down. I'm gonna pray and plead for God for wisdom and power in this situation. And then I'm gonna step in. God, I need to drive and close I need to praise you. And then ultimately, I'm gonna step out. It's interesting that um, historians have a hard time believing Daniel was written when, when it looks like it was written because it's so crazy accurate for the future, which just shows, man, that prophecy in scripture is one of the ways God proves that he actually was God. And we see here, that Daniel almost dying was never the point of the story. Instead, God had way more at stake. Have you ever thought about that? The difficulties that you're going through are not the story. God's got more. And if you will step down and you will step in and step out, God will reveal more to you. You know what also happens then in this scene that we thought was gonna end horribly? Credibility that we can trust this book and that the other people could trust the God of Daniel. Daniel saves all these other people's lives. That probably made him a little more popular. And Daniel gets promoted. And this pagan king is worshiping the God, capital G of all lowercase g, gods. What seems impossible, God is saying, is actually just an invitation to lean into me so I can speak to you and give you wisdom and power. So when you're in the, between an impossible situation and being cut into pieces, or it feels like that, God's saying, will you pray? So, so what do we do with this? This is a crazy circumstance. We're never gonna go through a time probably where a king says, you better you know, give this answer or you're gonna die. 
but we are in crazy circumstances right now, right? If someone had told you in January what things would happen over the next couple months, you'd go, there's no way that's possible. So when we look at a pandemic and race wars and political unrest and economic collapse, they should draw us to our knees in prayer. And if you're not praying way more than you were praying before, then you are missing out what God wants to speak into your life. Now for Daniel, it came all in a couple hours, right? He's gonna be executed. So he prays through the night and then God reveals the dream to him and now he's promoted to a top role. But normally in our lives, it doesn't happen that quick, it can. But God still, it says in Daniel 2.22, reveals deep and hidden things in our lives. He shines light in the darkness. He wants to do that in your life. And let me give you an example from my life. This happened multiple times, but two and a half years ago. I'm sleeping. God wakes me up and it's one of those times where I'm just so clearly, God wants me to get up and go to the park behind my house. And as I'm there, I go, God, what do you want to talk about? And he said, I want to talk about the mission of your church. God spoke clearly to me and said, it's disciple making. Are you making disciples to make disciples to make disciples? I thought, well, God, I don't know if we're doing that, but we're doing so many other things. All these people are getting baptized and coming to Christ. And we're planting churches. And God just said, you are missing the mission of your life and of your church. And I've been carrying that around for two and a half years. And it led me on a journey where, man, walking through, man, how do we make sure we do what God has called us to do? Man, it's been, it's been tough. But I got to tell you, man, God's led us on this journey where, man, I have loved training people on how to be disciple makers that make disciples and seeing people get it. I was hanging out with a friend of mine this past week who had just finished some of this training. And I was there when he came to Christ two years ago uh, at a Kids Unleashed um, outreach. And he said, Jim, being a part of this has unlocked a part of my life that I didn't even know existed. And I come to life when I think about the way that God wants to use me. Man, if you want to learn more about that, come talk to me. I'd, I'd love to do that. But, but for us, it's got to be we step down into prayer. So here's a practical way we're going to live this out next week. We're not really going to walk through Daniel. We're just going to pray for the service and do some worship and a prayer and worship night and, uh, and live this out. But figure out, hey, how do I apply this message to my life? And then will you obey it? Um, and I think that's got to mean we're praying more. Hey, let's pray together. God, thanks so much for our time here today, God. And um, I pray for all of us as we deal with impossible situations that sometimes feel like it's in the middle of being cut into pieces. God, our first response would be to step down and to pray. God, we need you. And then step in. God, thank you for answering with wisdom and power. And then God, ultimately, to step out and obey what you've called us to do. Help us do that as a church. And specifically, what I talked about at the end. God, help us be a church that makes disciples to make disciples. God, help us cross the scary bridges to get to something that's so much better. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
waking up knowing there's a reason All my dreams come alive, life is for living With you, I've made my decision